So we're going to use the story of My Favorite Chaperone to review the elements of plot. So plot is just the sequence of events. Sequence meaning like first, second, third, you know, kind of like the order of events um, in a narrative. So every narrative has a plot. Whether you're talking about a narrative meaning a movie, a narrative which is a novel or a short story, which is what we you guys read this week. All right, so oftentimes you'll see plot diagrams that are shaped like a, a triangle. Um, so the triangle, generally, a lot of times they make it like straight up and down, but often, right, the story's turning point is not in the middle of the book. It's not in the middle of the story or the middle of the movie. It's, it's closer towards the end. So I'll make a leaning triangle for my plot diagrams. And the real basic, like, elementary ideas of plot would have been you have a beginning, you have a middle, and you have an end. So... You know, maybe um, down in primary, those were kind of the terminology of the words that would have been used. So beginning, middle, and end. But as you get further in your education, we want to start using more academic words for these uh, parts of a narrative, or these parts of a plot. So the beginning we call the exposition. So the exposition of a story is where the characters are introduced, um, you get um, information on the setting. Also, a big part of plot is the problem or the conflict. And we talked about this briefly yesterday with some of the questions you were answering, question five, question seven, discussing conflict. So conflict um, can be like um, person versus person, right? Human versus human. Um, you can also have conflict or problems where like the, the person or the, the character is battling something within themselves. So it can be like human versus self um, or um, human versus like nature, human versus the world. So in this story, you know, Maya is kind of battling against um, like kind of a cultural situation, right? So um, it's, it's her against kind of the cultural norms that she's been growing up with and what she wants to change into. Um, so, right in the exposition of this narrative, Maya and her family are immigrants. It's kind of the characters. Um, she wants to go to the spring fling, right, which is what she's hoping to do, but her parents are saying no, um, and that is the conflict or the problem in the story. So, and the setting is kind of like middle school um, setting. Part of, part of it's at her house, part of it's at the school. All right, and now in the middle, we're going to be talking about what's called the rising action, right? So the middle in a narrative incorporates quite a bit. It's going to have the rising action, which are the parts of the plot, the events that kind of lead that plot forward. It's not every little detail in a narrative. It's those events, those um, discussions, the dialogue that moves the story forward and moves the for story forward to the climax. So the climax is really, it's a turning point in the story. It's where the story kind of turns, changes direction and kind of starts to move towards um, resolving itself. So um, it's not always like the most exciting part of the story, maybe, but it's where the story takes a turn, where you finally start realizing how the problem or the conflict may end up getting solved. Then you have what's called the falling action. So, you know, the story is usually is starting to come to an end. You start seeing how the problem is being solved. And then you get to the end, which we call the resolution. So as you get further in school, right, we don't just call it the ending of the story. It is the resolution of the story, right? It's where the problem is or the conflict is solved or it is resolved. So you can see resolved is in the root of resolution, right? So we resolve the problem. So thinking about um, my favorite chaperone, right? Some of those rising actions, some of those elements that happened that kind of like increased the tension of the story, you know, made it seem like um, it was more likely like that Maya was not going to solve her problem. Well, which one of those, where is that turning point? That's a little trickier to usually figure out. So I like to think about it first. 
And so the turning point of this story is when Nershon is able to get um, their parents to give permission for Maya to go to the dance with him as the chaperone, right? Because that's the problem or the conflict of the story is her wanting to go to the dance. And then it looks like it's not going to happen. There's no way that's going to happen. And then suddenly he's able to convince um, their parents to, to let her go if he goes as a chaperone. So that's the turning point of the story, right? So um, it makes it easier to figure out where all those other parts are going to fall if we can kind of figure out where the climax or the turning point of the story is because then all the rest of it kind of falls into place. So let's think about what were some of those things that happened in the story that led up to that, what made it seem like, oh, this is never going to, you know, Maya's never going to get to go to the dance. Well, first of all, Nershan gets in trouble. He gets in a fight, right? And somehow, and if you're an older sibling, you might understand how, and I am, so I do kind of understand how, Nershan gets in a fight at school, and somehow Maya also gets into trouble, right? Nershan's the younger one. It's not really his fault. You need to pick up and take care of him, right? So you're like, oh, okay. And then so Maya's in trouble. She's probably not going to get to go to the dance. Oh my goodness, Maya gets in more trouble. She gets caught by her dad when he comes to pick her up. And what is she doing? She is kind of flirting, goofing around with one of the boys from school, Daniel, who she likes. So that seems like it's even going to be even less likely that Maya is going to get to go to the dance. Well, then, right, another element of the plot is that Maya's mother hurts her foot. And so this gives Maya a chance to show what a responsible daughter she is, that she's kind of growing up. So she gets to take on over her mom's duties and help out the family, right? And so I think, you know, that helps Maya's mother to kind of see that uh, Maya would be um, able to be mature enough to go to the dance. So then, right, Nershan gets, uh, parents convinces it, his parents to let her go to the dance. So what are some of those elements that are falling action? Well, Maya's mom gives Maya a bracelet. Now the bracelet's not just a bracelet. So often in literature, you know, there are things that are symbols of something else. So this bracelet for Maya's mother, right? And she gives it to her and kind of explains that it's a symbol of growing up. So that bracelet has some symbolism. It stands for, you know, this idea that Maya's growing up. She's becoming more mature. Maya's mom got it at a later age, but she's giving it to Maya now, right? At a younger age, kind of acknowledging that in this new um, culture that they're living in, that things are going to change. Right, then Maya gets to go to the dance with Nershawn as her chaperone. And then when she's at the dance, she gets to dance with Daniel. So all these things kind of resolve this like kind of tension that was building up in the story. Maya wanting to go to the dance, wanting to be able to dance with Daniel, right? Wanting her mom to accept the new culture. And then, you know, also Nershawn gives Maya some space, right? He's not there, he is there as her chaperone. But he's not there, like, kind of spying on her. Every time she's dancing, she realizes he's not there, like, paying attention. And then on the end of a narrative, often there's this look back. We want to look back and think, um, what do the characters learn from the story? And then how are they going to be looking forward to the future? Now, when you're writing your narratives, these are also something that you want to think about at the end. And at the end of the story, Maya's thinking back at what a good time she had, and she's really hoping that Nershawn will be her chaperone again. Right? So this is how this narrative, the falling action, everything wraps up, ties it up, and then there's a look to the future, and the problem is resolved.